There's a time in any freelancer's career where fear and self-doubt outweigh rational and cohesive thoughts. Photography is a subjective art. What makes you better than anyone else? Why are you getting those jobs and no one else? But what about when you're not getting these jobs? When you're not better than anyone else and those voices in your head are starting to make a lot of sense? But no matter what level you're at in your photography journey, there will always be a slow period. It's right now, just after the holidays. From your friends who spent too much on their gifts to the major brands that went over their marketing budgets last year, nobody has money to spend right now and the New Year's budgets aren't in yet. So as freelancers, it's important to know that we're just a trickle-down economy. We work when others work. So when the world decided it was best to shut down in the not-so-recent past, just after a very slow winter season, I was left almost ready to quit photography forever. At least as a business. Bank accounts were dwindling, bills were piling. I, I had to do something. I wasn't ready for this. I, I spent the first half of my career surviving off of word of mouth, and now those mouths weren't talking. I was never building a body of work for the shoots I wanted to get booked for, just hoping people would tell their friends. And then th that's when it clicked for me. See, creativity is, is like a muscle. The more you use it, the more you even understand what it does. It's kind of like deadlifting for the first time and being sore the next couple of days in places you didn't even know existed. When I was first starting out, I didn't even know what creativity was. T to be honest with you, I was like, this is a three-point lighting setup. This is Rembrandt lighting. What do you mean creative? This is no storytelling here. I'm just doing fancy lighting work. But the more you focus on that storytelling, the more you can really hone in that craft that we call photography. Pushing yourself to go shoot when you don't feel like shooting really helps you focus on those things that you do like to immortalize, those little intricacies that you do enjoy because you're just not in the mood to begin with. It's like when you're shooting with clients and they're not exactly things that you want or are excited about, but they help pay the bills, so you still end up showing up and you try to focus on those little individual things that you do like, and then hopefully the rest of it kind of just falls in the background. If you treat it more like a dedicated habit and you show up every day and work on that creativity, well, it's gonna feel a lot less like luck and more like a trick in your back pocket when you whip it out. So I gave myself a 30-day challenge, hashtag phone it in. The rules were simple. One photo a day, black and white only, has to be posted on Instagram. It was just on my phone and it was black and white, so it got me to think about just the lights and the shadows and not worry too much about what's going on or if I make a good shot or not. Just do the best I can and whatever happens, happens. It got me to get out of the house after what was already a you know slow after the holiday season, kind of like we're experiencing right now. And then coupled with now we can't even see each other in public or we can't even have gatherings where restaurants were closed. So what do you do? Well, for me, it was street photography. Sure, it's fun to have huge scenes with chaos happening at intersections or with tons of people in your images, but I think the images I was able to capture during this moment were unique in their own sense and how empty they were and how barren they were. The challenge is just a month, 30 days only. Just get out of the house. Find one image that you like, find one frame that you like in the city every day for 30 days and that way you'll get your mind thinking about creativity again, trying to be creative again. There's nothing crazy, not like a six month thing or not I can't miss an upload no matter what, but it was one month, 30 days, just get out and go. I hadn't shot in what felt like forever, so I was just at a point where I just needed to create something. I didn't understand why I was irritated with life, not let alone with the circumstances of what was going on, but at the same time, I just I felt like I was not shooting. I wasn't shooting enough. I wasn't having that creative outlet to help me get rid of some stress. The more I was stuck shooting things I didn't want to shoot, the, the more it made me understand what it is I'd like to shoot and what got me creating in the first place. And that's what motivated me to build a new portfolio and create a body of work that expressed the way I want to shoot things, the attract the clients that I want to attract. The more you start to shoot for money, the, the less you start to shoot without money. It's kind of like a catch-22 where you're like, well, I've done it for this amount, why can't I do it for this amount more? So you get into this trap where you're not creating for yourself, you're not progressing, you're not doing anything that would otherwise be progressing your career forward. You're just waiting for those jobs to come and not actively seeking out new clients in a specific style that you're looking for. If you find yourself in a rut, just, just go shoot. Go shoot for the sake of it. No money, no pressure, no nothing involved. Just shoot because it's fun. It's fun to create something that doesn't exist. Nothing crazy, no fancy setups, not 14 different lights in my living room, but just one camera, a black and white roll of film, and the street of Victoria. I challenge you to go shoot something out of your comfort zone. Shoot something when you don't feel like shooting. Creativity stems from limitations. It, it builds on the lack of availability. If you give yourself a constraint, your mind will find a workaround. I think what happened during that time is that a culmination of all of these, you know, 
poor advertising habits, slow season, lockdown, and now I'm just like, oh, now what? Dude, does this mean I have to quit? Does this mean I have to get a regular job? Does this mean I have to, does this mean I'm not good enough for this whole thing? Or does this mean I just have to change my mindset and create something that aligns myself and aligns my clients with what they can expect from me? I think one of the common pitfalls is when you start making money with photography is that you just stop taking on free gigs or shooting for yourself or shooting for the sake of creating. And that's a mistake, that's an error on our part. This was still very early in the pandemic. We, we did not know it was gonna last over two years. It was a week in and we're like, all right, can I go out again? Oh man, it's been a month, what now? What do I do? So I needed an outlet. I needed something to get me out of the house and to just get me creating again. At the time, I was shooting almost exclusively portraits, so it wasn't something that I was gonna actively seek out to do in the middle of a worldwide lockdown. So I went back to what got me to shoot in the first place, which was just street photography and capturing moments that are happening out in the wild, literally immortalizing a moment in time. And this way, I was able to focus on just one task, one photo a day, make sure I post it, make sure I share it, make sure that I have a accountability with my audience and with people around me or my friends, whoever it was. And that just got those wheels turning again. When it's slow, after the holidays or in the middle of a pandemic, you have to go out and shoot anyway. You have to take your camera and fall in love with it once again. You have to push yourself to constantly be creating and finding that joy that made you pick up a camera in the first place. So I took those matters into my own hand and I created a whole new body of work that was hopefully gonna gather me a whole new set of clients. It just helped me get into that groove again. It got me to start shooting. I don't really have anything to say, I just thought this was a cool shot. I'd given myself another little goal after that 30 day challenge, which was to make a tangible representation of that time during the pandemic and to have a physical copy of all the moments that were captured during this time. I called it values because I realized that the streets of Victoria were very empty and there were certain things that people were not willing to give up, whether that was going to the post office or going to breakfast. And that's what I think I photographed in that book. This is cool. <laughs> they really wanted you to know that they were open this was the closest thing I could get to a busy intersection. Going to get your groceries. Gang squad. Oh, this guy was funny. He's got his priorities straight, that's for sure. Getting your ice cream run late night. Just help me, you know kind of work on those important things in life. So find your voice, share it with the world. I'll see you guys next week. Later. Mm -hmm.